We turn now to the race against time. Conservationists in Maryland are fighting to combat sea level rise before some native species and pieces of American history are lost to climate change. Our Ginger Z takes us to the Blackwater National Wild, Wildlife Re Refuge and this week's It's Not Too Late. Hi, I'm Ginger Z and It's Not Too Late. Well, yet. For the spot I'm standing on now, this marsh will eventually turn to all open water. So it will be too late, eventually. But... To the black water in our veins, they say. This is the Blackwater National Wildlife Refuge, home to bald eagles, osprey, and dozens of other species. It's also a swampy, mosquito-laden 29,000-acre marsh that is progressively going under thanks to sea level rise. I know what you're thinking. Okay, it's a swamp. Does it matter that it goes underwater? So should we walk up? Yes, let's do yeah, it. let's go take a look. Blackwater National Wildlife Refuge was established in 1933 primarily as a, a migratory bird refuge. And so people recognize the value of this landscape and, and um, uh, providing habitat for birds that are migrating up and down the Atlantic Flyway. And this vast expanse of coastal marsh that they found here in the Blackwater River um, was really high quality habitat. So what Blackwater provides is a real visual representation of sea level rise. You see all that open water out there that used to be marsh, which is what we see right in front of us. That marsh leads to a progression of dead trees, each being killed by salinity and all of it moving upslope. We've lost 5,000 acres of tidal marshes converted to open water, um, but also that same tidal marsh has been sliding upslope. And you can see to the, to the back here where um, the forest ha is slowly dying off and converting into this tidal marsh habitat. So it's a very, very dynamic setting and a setting which we're just starting to understand. So it's time to wait her up. We gotta get in there. This marsh is not only a critical part of Maryland's geography, but it's also incredible part of African-American history. This area is sometimes called Tubman country. When you walk in here, do you feel the history? I feel the presence of Harriet Tubman and those who sought freedom and followed her to, to freedom. So yes, rich history. Yes, that is Ms. Harriet Tubman to you, the badass, slave-freeing, Civil War-spying OG feminist. These are the very forests. If Harriet Tubman were here today, none of this landscape would have looked different to her at all. This is, as you can tell, it's very serene, it's very quiet, and um, what an amazing woman to be able to do what she did. Back when Ms. Tubman was leading groups of slaves to freedom, she would have utilized in the dark of night these dense forests shrouded in the leaves and all of the branches. But now these same forests, because of the sea level rise, have been invaded by salt water. And that kills the trees, leaving only sticks coming out of the marsh, something they call ghost forests. Just three months ago, archaeologists were racing against that sea level rise to find a cornerstone in Harriet Tubman's timeline. Through pieces of plates, coins, glass, and buttons, they were able to confirm that Ben Ross, Harriet Tubman's father, lived here in the 1800s. Sea level rise was already beginning to take away that particular site and that history. So if we had waited, if we hadn't been able to uh, begin this, even a couple years, we might never have found it. So here, you're already seeing some dieback, but there's still forest here. Yeah, that's right, that's right. So this is, um, this is the early stages of the forest dying off. You can see that, that salt water and, uh, and more and more water is already starting to impact what used to be an upland forest. Mm -hmm. um, but as, uh, as the site gets wetter and as salt water starts to work itself into the groundwater, you can start to see the, the pines are dying off. They First, don't like the salt. Not at all. Yeah. No, they can't tolerate any of that. Probably another you know, 10 or 20 years in this forest will just be um, just standing snags with marsh vegetation in the understory. So we'll kind of walk down the edge. Matt says they're also concerned about Phragmites. That's an invasive plant that is just taking over huge parts of the marsh. This is a, a salt grass, this is marsh cord grass. These are the, the native plants that 
pre-Phragmites, this would be the plant community that would, would dominate in these high irregularly flooded marshes. This is the, the, uh, the marsh hay community. But the Phragmite comes in, steals from that. Yep. But unfortunately, Phragmites comes in, it outcompetes the native species and just forms this huge monoculture. If it wasn't for this, I would feel like, um, like we've got a clear path forward to conservation to some of the most threatened species here in the Chesapeake Bay. But because of Phragmites, I think that's gonna make that, um, that success story much, much more challenging. Around Blackwater, the biggest threat with climate change is water. One study by Climate Central says that they could see floods every month by 2050. And the government's own analysis shows that the entire marsh will move and expand as sea level keeps rising. But in some parts of Blackwater, they have been doing the work, beating back the changes and restoring the marsh. Whether it's the beauty of the environment or the history, they are working to protect the area. And they're realistic. They know that some impacts of climate change are inevitable. The reality is we are dealing with climate change and um, we are seeing the impacts of sea level rise to some degree. So I would say probably by the end of the century, um, things will start to change in here, you know, pretty much. But while we can do it and while we have the ability, you know, we need to try and do as much as we can to protect what we can for as long as we can. My segment's called It's Not Too Late. However, I think I've come to a place where in some of it, it is too late. I am very confident that at the end of my lifetime, Dorchester County will continue to be one of the largest expanses of tidal marsh in the Chesapeake Bay. The trick is what kind of marsh will it be right. and what plants and animals will live in that marsh. And that's what we're still sorting out. So this really isn't just a story about conserving wildlife. It's a story about conserving history. I'm Ginger Z, and it really isn't too late. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.